and was like, have you ever heard of what a Dow is? And I was like, Dow Jones? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And he was like, <laughs> no. And he was like, no. <laughs> a Dow, a decentralized autonomous organization. Welcome to the iBuyer Experiment. We have a special guest today, Barkley Romero. Barkley is the creator and owner of Real Gratitude, which is a marketing-based company that also involves Web3. She's also a real estate agent out of Tucson, Arizona, and I am so excited for you to listen to what we've got in store for you today. Welcome, Barkley. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Oh, it's so nice to have you. So a little backstory of how I met Barkley. We were both on a podcast for Proppy, and we were just being interviewed about technology and real estate. And my goodness, girl, you are a real estate agent. You are an innovator. You are a charitable person. You created a foundation. You have so many things. Uh, and for today's focus, Barkley, first of all, just give us a little backstory on who you are, how you got into real estate, and what is most exciting for you right now? Absolutely. So a little bit of background on me. I originally got my real estate license in California. Um, I got it a couple months before the pandemic. So that was a really interesting adoption period of having just figured out my flow of what I was going to be doing uh, in order to generate business, which was mainly open houses and door knocking. Um, to figuring out what to do when both of those were shut down legally. So um, what I started doing was I created a Facebook group that helped my neighbors reconnect during the pandemic so that they could redistribute everything that was being hoarded. Mm. Or if a neighbor needed some help going grocery shopping because they were high risk or anything like that, they could post on the group and then somebody could fulfill their need. Um, and by way of that, people started reaching out to me in the community for help, um, but also for real estate advice. So I just started blending the two together. And now with every single real estate transaction I do, I do something to connect the community. So that's really how I found my love for real estate was not only being able to help serve my clients and get them into the homes that they dreamed of and to help sell their homes, of course, but also how we could use the real estate industry as a pillar for giving back. That's so cool. Very neat. And what is the name of your organization? Real Gratitude. Real Gratitude. What a cool name. And Thank you. Thank yeah. You. So, yeah. So tell us about how you were, how you got into Web3 and started learning about <laughs> that and started really becoming a proponent of the future. Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of my friends, sent me a random text message in October of 2021 and was like, have you ever heard of what a Dow is? And I was like, Dow Jones? Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. And he was like, <laughs> no. And he was like, no. <laughs> a Dow, a decentralized autonomous organization. And I had no idea what he was talking about, but I was open to learning something new. And he said, this is really something that I think you would vibe on because it kind of sounds like what you're creating already. Um, it's just a community of people that believe in one centralized vision in a completely decentralized way. Um, so I read a couple articles on it and I was blown away. I was like, Alice down the rabbit hole into Web3. <laughs> well, it's funny because you remember you're like in October of 2021. 21. <laughs> a friend of mine sends me a text message. So yeah, it did take you down the rabbit hole. It did. It really did. It really did. I remember um, for a couple weeks, I was like, wow, the impact of what this could have for infrastructure so that we're not reliable on government for everything, right? So that we could come to our community for needs. Um, it, it just blew me away the possibilities of blockchain infrastructures for companies. And then once I started learning about NFTs and how we could put utility onto that and how it can really help a real estate transaction, I was completely sold. Okay, so well, let's let's dive into that a little. Uh, yeah. So 
first, if this is the first time that you're hearing of a, what did you call it? a decentralized autonomous organization? Autonomous organization so, or a tokenized community. Okay. So if this is the first time you're hearing about that, what, what does that mean? All it is, is a group of people that come together around a treasury and they say, this is what our goal is. This is what our mission is. And now we are going to democratically say how we are going to move as a community and how we are going to use that treasury. So it, it, just think of it as a shared bank account that's voted on how it moves. So how, how, did this, how does this integrate and impact real estate? Absolutely. So um, really fun question because we are actually creating the first on-chain team in the form of a DAO. Um, what that means is that all of our real estate agents join the DAO and that they get a token that gives them heavier weighted votes during our voting periods so that they have a little bit more say of what's going on in the community. Because if you think about the real estate agents that we work with, they're going door to door and they're meeting the neighbors and they know exactly what the neighbors want to see. They know what the neighbors, how the neighbors want their communities to grow. They're getting the inside scoop. So it gives them a little bit more weight, right? Because they've got more responsibilities. So what that does is it creates a way for our real estate agents, whenever they close on a transaction, a portion of their commission goes into the treasury. It doesn't go into their team leader's pocket. It doesn't go into, I mean, a portion does go into their broker's pocket because they do still have to pay their broker. But what it does is it creates a fund where us as a real estate team can decide what we do with that. Do we want to start our own real estate school and start a scholarship fund for new agents that come with come to real gratitude? Do we want to launch products, which is what we're doing? We already have an MVP scheduled to launch later this year. Um, it gives us that opportunity to grow as a real estate team in a way that the real estate team has a say in what's going on and they're just not blindly following a leader. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. I like that. Mm -hmm. They're not blindly following a leader. Sounds like that this idea came from maybe experience. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a so little bit. Yeah. What inspired you to create this? Yeah, so a statistic I learned pretty early on was that 85% of real estate agents quit within the first five years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and honestly, that kind of shook me. Yes. I have been with multiple brokerages. I've been um, with multiple brokerages, left them and then come back to the brokerage before, or, you know. So in my experience of working with brokers and with team leads, what I have found is that they ask a lot from you. Um commission wise, the standard is 50%. So if we're looking at that, and still, a lot of agents aren't feeling like they're getting enough support to stay in the game. After five years or during that five years, something is broken, right? Inherently. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the brokers right now, to be quite honest, they're trying to stay afloat. The broker model is not very sustainable in itself. So they don't necessarily have time and resources to give much more to their new agents than they're already giving. So that makes it our responsibility as, you know, third party um, offerings to be able to create a system for real estate agents to learn and grow their business it leaves an opportunity for somebody to come in and provide that for the space. Mm -hmm. What I see as the most beneficial to real estate agents and community members is that if we teach agents how to connect with their community, how to benefit um, the nonprofits and collect items for them and boost their voices, as well as use the local businesses as partners and talk to the community members and hear their voices and raise their voices up as well, if we create that platform within the real estate agent, it is beneficial for everyone. It's a win-win. Right. Right. Very cool. Interesting. So your, your MVP product, 
is focused on the the agent and serving the agent as is it a team infrastructure that you have? So our MVP is actually a different product. Oh, but okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're launching we're launching the DAO, um, the infrastructure for our real estate agents. So Real Gratitude is the marketing company that helps real estate agents learn how to build their business oh. by um, connecting the community. The DAO that each real estate agents a part of is called real change. Interesting. So, Very yeah. cool. Okay. So I want to dig into that for a minute because, um, as you know, I created a software company and I was a real estate broker and never had, I mean, I'd ventured into some technologies. We built a couple apps and that sort of thing, but at the scale at which, you know, it sounds like same with you creating a DAO, obviously that's going to require a lot of technical expertise. And so I want to talk a little bit about how you, uh, as a real estate agent with a business <laughs> and you're busy and you have this vision, how do you find source the talent and create this? Or did you do it yourself? Like, are you a developer yourself or did you go and find developers? Mm. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, I have been really, really lucky that the first couple, the first year and a half of, I, I would say the first two years of my company, um, I just focused on web two and building the community. And what I found is that 45 to 55% of the people that I talk to when I'm out door knocking and collecting items for nonprofits, give me their email address and want further information and to be a part of the community. So I proved proof of concept that this is something people want in web two. Then in November of last year, I decided to go web three with it. That was the ultimate goal. I just knew with building a DAO, the first step is make your mission statement. The second step is build the community. So with that, I just started um, integrating Twitter into what I was doing and really focusing on building my Twitter engagement. And with that, I was doing Twitter spaces um, and just meeting other people in Web3 because that's really where everybody in Web3 and blockchain hangs out is Twitter. Um, so I was going in those and I was just meeting people and talking about real gratitude and the ideas I had for it. And people started getting on board. Um, so through Twitter spaces, I found a secretary for our nonprofit I found the, the, um, a board member for our nonprofit, and now she is the CPO of Real Gratitude. Um, and I've also gotten on board a, a couple different um, lawyers. We have a lawyer out of New Hampshire, Tal Alex Talcott, who is just a, a godsend, and he does all my contract work for me. We spend hours on Zoom. <laughs> and then I've got Bob Cornish out in Wyoming, who actually got the Dow infrastructure passed as a business entity in the state of Wyoming. So as far as building my team, that's something that has happened um, really quickly and very organically since November. Um, and, and now we are bringing on a dev. So we actually sent out an NDA to our potential dev today. So we're really hopeful to get them on board and start building the actual um, MVP that we'll be releasing later this year. But as far as hosting the DAO, there's really great tools out there for starting DAOs. Um, a, we have our whole community on Twitter. And then B, we have our community on Discord as well. And then C, we are using Charmverse for our DAO. Charmverse hmm. is basically like Discord without some of the um, features. It doesn't have a stage, but it has a chat forum. It has treasury, it has bounties, it has reputation, voting, everything that we need to host our DAO without having to do the dev work. So it's made it a lot easier to get started. Oh, that's cool. Kind of like Canva for a DAO. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's great. It's great. And, and I, I know that some of our listeners are probably listening to us right now going, okay, all of these terms, and maybe they're feeling like, whoa, I need to educate myself on, on some of these things. And I believe that change is coming in hot and heavy. 
and yeah. things are going to accelerate and change quickly. And, you know, five years from now, it'll be vastly different. I'm sure you share that sentiment, but let's talk specific ways that, that we think Web3 will impact real estate. Yeah. So I think that Web3 will impact real estate by making it more reliable and much more swift. Um, as I've been talking about the MVP, just to give you a little bit of insight to what we're developing in order to see um, growth in the industry is we're creating a platform for people to create digital twins of their homes that keeps track of any damages, repairs, updates, improvements. And the real estate agent handles that digital twin similar to a white glove concierge. So they're able to keep hands on that digital twin and that client for longer periods as opposed to just popping up for the transaction. Mm. So where I see real estate going in the next couple of years is, well, it's going to be really interesting to see what they do with buyers, um, agents, commissions. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so that in itself is something that we're going to be facing. Um, but kind of the reason why we're coming out with the platform is because it gives us that relationship to have with the client over the period of their home ownership, as opposed to just being transaction um, managers, right? So that keeps us in the game with sellers for longer. And then once they're ready to sell, we're top of mind. They're already in a contract with us that if we're managing their digital twin, they'll use us as an agent. So if they don't, it's a buyout. We still get paid for our services, right? So I see a lot changing um, just in general in the real estate industry, but I see blockchain being able to support it in being able to help us learn what this new world is going to be like with commissions. And then I also see it being able to support um, the real estate transaction itself, because right now our only method of keeping title is paper documentation mm -hmm. and then scanning it up to the internet, right? which is not even done in every locale, right? We still have people that are places that don't have their title on the internet. So it's a real issue, um, not knowing how the home, how the property is surveyed, not knowing exactly what has happened to the home and over the lifetime of the home. And the only thing you have to go off of are the seller's disclosures and then the inspection period, but you never know what's behind a wall um, or what's under the floor, you know? So this creates a record. What we're able to do is create a record similar to Carfax, what they were doing mm -hmm. for homes. And when it comes time to that sale, for that sale to happen, all they have to do is pull up that certified record, view it, and it can make the transaction much more reliable and much more smooth. If we have something to go off of it, I would always recommend to my clients to do an inspection period, but we do see cases where it's an all cash buyer or something done um, with cryptocurrency. And we don't necessarily need an inspection period. And we also don't necessarily, um, want to do an inspection period to keep that offer as competitive as possible, right? But still, as an agent, I would always recommend to do one. With what we're creating, this platform, we're calling it the home connection platform. What we can create with that is a way for the agent and the client and the lender all to pull that digital twin up and look at that record and see that over the span, we've done regular inspections so that, you know, no, no surprises are popping up. We do an initial inspection to get a baseline. Mm. And so they're able to make an educated decision on whether or not they want to move on with that transaction without feeling like they're buying the house as is. Right, right. Because the whole point of the inspection is to learn about the home. And if you have all of that at your fingertips, 
Well, then you've just learned about it. Learned. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I, I like this. So, so I would imagine the challenge that we face as a real estate industry in moving towards a blockchain system is that we ha- we have to get the records on the blockchain. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, talk to me about about that about that challenge and and what you see happening, you know, and maybe how that starts to happen. Yeah, so I see it happening slowly, but surely. I think it's going to be about teaming up with our title people as opposed to, um, you know, completely dissolving them. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to have to be a partnership and it's going to have to be a partnership with the government as well for them to be able to take these these records as Bible. Because if they don't recognize it, it makes a pretty um, impact on blockchain. It makes a nice little record, but it doesn't really serve an ultimate purpose um, or the, not the ultimate purpose, but the, I would say the, um, the most beneficial purpose to us, if we don't have that backing from the government, as well as from the title people that we're working with. Right. Good point. I I mean, I've been in real estate so long, Barkley, that I remember what it was like before digital signatures. Like, like, trust me, there was a point in time where there was <laughs> not e-sign. And, the, and when it rolled out, you know, it was interesting because it took a while for everyone to kind of agree that, okay, we're going to accept a digital signature as a signature. And so it's kind of like, you know, I feel like like it's similar in that we have to get the adoption and the agreement that, okay, this is a thing and it's legit. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. that's, that's definitely a challenge. So we've got some hurdles ahead. Uh, you know, that's interesting. Okay. You talk about some, some people, I think when they think blockchain and they think real estate, they think that it's going to eradicate title companies. And I, I actually disagree. And I'm glad you said that it's not, it's likely going to be working in conjunction. Why don't title companies just do this? Why, why do you think that, you know, first American or the big guys aren't out there doing this right now? Or are they? I don't know. I've talked to a couple of my title people. I've reached out to my title people and it seems like um, similar to what you're saying, um, I, I think that it might be fear-based mm-hmm. because I think that title people aren't seeing it as a way that they can keep their name in the game. They're seeing it as a way that it can out them. So I, I really think that it's just fear-based and maybe there's some people that are doing stuff that we just don't know about. But from my experience of talking to um, title people, there has been interest in getting into it and learning about it and stuff, but there hasn't been anyone that has said, oh, I have an idea or, I, oh, I want to support this or, oh, I want to be involved. So if you do, if you are in title and you are interested in building and you're watching this podcast, (laughs) please, please, please reach out to me because I could really use a resource um, to develop with, uh, somebody to develop with. Great. And Barkley, how would, how would, what would be the best way for them to get in contact with you? Absolutely. Um, Any, any way um, through my social medias, real, real dot Barkley on Instagram, or just send me an email to Barkley like Charles Barkley, B-A-R-K-L-E-Y, at realgratitude.org. Awesome. And we'll flash those up on screen so that if you're watching, you'll be able to see that as well. Uh, Before we go, I want to just touch on how we can advance this cause, because I'm with you. I am all about making the transaction more efficient, faster, a better consumer experience. And I believe that technology has the ability to do that. And so how do we advance this cause, Barkley? What can we do if we're passionate about moving the industry forward? Yeah, if you're interested about moving the industry forward, learn as much as possible, read as much as possible, listen to as much as possible. Um, It's really important to know what you're talking about and use proper vernacular and vernacular that won't scare people away. Um, I think that's the most important 
part is just knowing what you're talking about and having that knowledge to be a resource for other people, because that's ultimately as real estate agents, what we're going to need to be. Um, and if real gratitude sounds interesting to you, because what we will be offering to our team is not only coursework on how to build your business by connecting the community, but also dynamic coursework on blockchain and NFTs and all, all of the things, Web3, in order to um, speak to your clients and to other agents about what we're working on. So if education and pushing forward, um, pushing the industry forward is something you're interested in, definitely, again, reach out. I would love to help be a resource for you. Um, and we are going to be launching a mint soon. We're going to be doing our initial mint for the DAO. And the way that we're doing that is we are using it as a fundraising tool for the platform. So what that means is that all of our board members and officers of the nonprofit hold the most weight to their vote. And then there's the real estate agent and they hold weighted vote as well. And then we'll be releasing another token that will also hold weight and special utility. And that will be for our donors and investors to get in and so that they can put a portion towards um, building our MVP. So if you are interested in, um, in learning more, in supporting, in helping grow these things, there are ways for you to literally get your name in the game and your money in the game to start building it and being a part of it. Well, that is so cool. I could talk with you all day about these things <laughs> yeah. because I mean, Preach. I feel I feel like we're we're both probably pretty nerdy when it comes to <laughs> real estate and technology. And so I am so thankful for your time today. I got to get a quick video for my Instagram uh, because yay. yay, this <laughs> this is Barkley. We are podcasting today. Uh, Colby set up this new configuration and it's uh it's really cool thank you colby appreciate hey. you thank you colby <laughs> and thank you so much barkley um it has been a pleasure and i love your i love your your outfit so cute <laughs> thank you i got it in mexico well it's adorable um, <laughs> thank you yeah so it's been a blast thank you so much for being here today and we appreciate you Thank you. I really appreciate you too. It's always such a pleasure to connect with you um, specifically because you're just doing such great things and um, such a supportive light. So thank you for being that. I uh, appreciate it. Of course. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye.